recognized as one of the nation's leading healthcare podcasts, you're listening to Spend Less on Healthcare with Dr. Josh Luke, where you'll get simple tips to reduce the amount of money you and your family spend on healthcare. Hosted by longtime hospital CEO, healthcare futurist, three time Amazon number one best selling author, corporate coach, and sought after keynote speaker, Dr. Josh Luke, he and guests teach you how to keep more money in your pocket and live healthier. Take a seat in Dr. Luke's waiting room. Hey folks, before we jump into the next segment of the show, I want to make sure you know how to request further information from me or from the show or whatever it is you're looking for. And the best way to do that, we've really simplified it for you, is just to text the word Josh, my first name, J-O-S-H, to 72000, that's 72000. In fact, when you text the show, you'll not only receive our free gift, which is 10 tips to start saving on healthcare today, you'll receive it right away, but you'll also uh, receive promo codes for some of the other products and services we offer you to learn how to uh, spend less on health care for you and your family. So that's text the word Josh to 72000 and get your 10 tips list at no charge today. Thanks so much. Text me. Your spend less on health care one minute tip on how to save for today's show uh, is real simple, folks. I want you to shop for drugs, whatever that might be. We're talking about legal drugs, folks, not illegal drugs. You can see too much of that on television nowadays. But, hey, I'm talking about going to a website like goodrx.com, or um, you can even go to drjoshluke.com and see a few others where you can compare prices. What I love about GoodRx and some of these other transparency tools is – when I need a prescription, it says, hey, if you go to your normal pharmacy, it costs X amount of dollars, X amount of cents. If you drive a few miles further, you can get it for cheaper at this other pharmacy. Uh, if you want to order it online, you can get it uh, this afternoon delivered to you um, for a few bucks less. And if you want to wait a day, if it's not a hurry, you can get it for real cheap from these different pharmacies. It's a price comparison tool. It tells you when you can expect to do it. GoodRx is one of several. That's today's one-minute tip on how you and your family can save on health care today. Welcome to the Spend Less on Healthcare show with Dr. Josh Luke. This is the first of our uh, rebranded, renamed show, which we're now calling Spend Less on Healthcare with Dr. Josh Luke. It used to be known as Dr. Luke's Waiting Room, the Healthcare Authority podcast. Uh, we launched the new show. Uh, with the start of 2020, we're in a new decade, new show name, uh, and, a, and a little bit of a new focus, not, not necessarily new, but a little bit narrower, which is our whole focus is teaching you, the consumer, the mom, the dad, the, the single executive that uh, is spending too much on healthcare, because we all are, uh, just bringing you simple tactics on how to spend less on healthcare. We're going to include all kinds of uh, different uh, simple tips on how to save on healthcare. Each show is going to include uh, kind of a pre-programmed one tip to save on healthcare at the beginning of the show. Uh, we're going to share with you some different supporters of the show that also can help you save healthcare. But what I wanted to do was do a 2020 launch show today and just talk about some of the things, not that just that you can expect from, from this show, but also um, – what the themes were of 2019 and what you can expect in 2020. We're going to do that for about a half hour. And then you are going to hear from one of our guests and guys, it was an awesome, awesome uh, show uh, to talk to um, the guest on, on the first show of the year, which is Andrea Wilson Woods, who took care of her sister and during her cancer battle and now uh, started cancer you and does some other things. She has a book out, uh, all kinds of those things. So it's turn into uh, tune into the next episode. Of Spend less on healthcare. You'll hear from our guest Andrea Wilson was. But today, let's talk about a few things: price transparency in healthcare, executive orders, uh, inpatient versus outpatient, uh, how you can become an EHC, an engaged healthcare consumer, whether it's for shopping a procedure, a test, a surgery, or even just shopping for medications. Uh, we're going to give you some options on how to do that. Uh, we're also going to um, tell you how you can request some free money to spend towards healthcare however you want through healthy.com. That's H-L-T-H-E.com. Talk a little bit about cost sharing. But also, guys, um, this year, 2020, we're launching 10 tips to save on healthcare. Quickest way to do that, to get that is for you guys just to text the word Josh, very simple, text Josh, J-O-S-H, to 72,000, regardless of your carrier. Just type in 72,000. That's three zeros. So 72000, just type the word Josh, and it'll send you a quick response and just reply to it with approval, and then we'll send you on how you can get that free gift, which is 10 tips 
on how to start saving on healthcare today. Uh, hey, so uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Let's get right into the price transparency thing. If there was a theme in healthcare in 2019, all you had to do is look at the media, look at uh, LinkedIn, look at Twitter, or just see what was going on on Capitol Hill, price transparency, uh, legislation requiring hospitals to post prices. In fact, in early 2019, uh, the deadline um, started for them to for hospitals to post prices. Most of them did that. Uh, however, most of it uh, was in a language that was unfamiliar to most American consumers. So the feds are continuing down that path of really um, tightening up uh, what hospitals share with us in advance so we have a better understanding and can shop it. And I think you'll see some tighter restrictions in 2020, 21, and 22 on hospitals. I think you might even see some universal language introduced by uh, the federal government or by the healthcare industry that simplifies um, that language. That So when you go look for the cost of a procedure that a hospital is offering, it's not in some code or or some healthcare code that you don't understand, but in common terms based uh, simple, uh, similar to what they've told you your procedure is going to be. So, um, so we're, we're walking down that path. And the good news, folks, is you can – you can roll your eyes or shake your head, but the good news is we're walking down the path, and, and 2019 was the first time we've done that. So I'm encouraged by that. Later in the year, we saw executive orders that required pharmaceutical pricing transparency and also that hospitals share their rates with insurance carriers. And guys, I got to tell you, 10 years earlier when I was a hospital CEO back in, I was, I was in that role from 2004 about 10 years off and on after that. But in, in 10 years earlier, if you would have told me you have to share publicly the price, your contracted negotiated rate with a specific insurance carrier, I would have been sued by that carrier as a hospital CEO for doing that. And now the feds are mandating it and there's going to be a fight. But the point is we're moving in that direction. Well, oh, uh, not how quickly things change. Uh, that cliche is how quickly things change. But in this case, it's not how quickly it's been 10 years. It's long overdue. And I think all those things are, are advancing us towards a point where um, you are going to be forced to become an EHC, an engaged healthcare consumer. Why? Well, because when hospitals and insurers and pharmaceutical companies are required to post their prices, then there's no excuse for you to keep overspending on healthcare. There's no excuse for you to keep shrugging your shoulders and not become an EHC, which is an engaged healthcare consumer. So guys, this is all for you and for your benefit, but you need to start engaging now so you can learn the process. And by the time you get this process down, you'll have more tools at your disposal to become an EHC. So uh, price transparency across the board is to benefit you. Now, before we move on to the next topic, you know, when you think about a high deductible uh, health plan, well, this is why, because the insurance carriers started passing that those costs on of us overspending for going to the, the shiny hospital on the hill for a $70,000 procedure instead of picking the one next door to it that might have only been 20000 even though the same doctor might have operated there and the quality scores and the customer satisfaction are the same. We all just think shinier and bigger is better in this country, and we need to engage so we can learn that that's not always the case, and there might be a significant savings by going down the street. So these these high deductible plans were the insurance carrier's way of passing that um, irresponsible, avoidable spending on to the employer. And your employer may, might have done that for a year or two. And then they said, hey, wait a minute. Our employees are always picking the big shiny one without even looking at it or asking questions or comparing. So we're just going to pass that cost on to them in the form of a high deductible plan. So that's kind of a, a, a two-minute history on the, on the history of high deductible plans evolving to become the norm in healthcare, but now we're going to have a, a crisis on our hands if we don't already, like we did with real estate, where people are stuck with all of these uh, astronomical healthcare bills that they can't pay. So you shrug your shoulders and say, where do we go from here? You have this astronomical debt and you need other answers. So transparency, high deductible health plans, and all of this comes down to you becoming an engaged healthcare consumer and the transparency is going to give you tools to improve uh, in that regard, but don't wait. Uh, we're going to talk about some other resources for you to become an EHC. And if you do uh, text the word Josh to 72,000, we'll send you 10 tips that help you become an EHC right away. And they're simple, guys. They're, they're created to be um, simple, that things you can implement very quickly and don't require a lot of reading, research, or price comparison. And that's our free gift to you, by the way, from the Spend Less on Healthcare podcast. Uh, just text the word Josh to 72,000. 
Hey folks, it's Doug Sandler, host of the Turnkey Podcast and the Nice Guys on Business Podcast, downloaded 3.5 million times in 175 plus countries. I wanted to make sure that you know that Dr. Josh Luke is not only a nationally recognized podcast host, but an award-winning futurist and one of the most engaging and funniest keynote speakers you could ever see at any type of event. Did you know that Dr. Luke founded a not-for-profit in honor of his mom to raise money for Alzheimer's? And when he speaks, proceeds go to that cause? Whether it's an association event, trade meeting, corporate meeting, or church, Dr. Luke is counting on you to reach out to your event planner today to keep his epic run going of being one of America's hottest up-and-coming keynote speakers. He will have you rolling in your seats with laughter and at the same time engage you with stories that help you live healthier and save thousands on healthcare. You can follow him daily on LinkedIn and Twitter and check out his speaking samples on his YouTube channel as well. And when he speaks, everyone in the audience gets a free copy of his most recent best-selling book. And who doesn't want to hear a futurist speak? In fact, the first three people to reach out to the show today to connect Dr. Luke to their association meeting planner will receive a free copy of his book. Reach out at info at spendlessonhealthcare.com. That's I-N-F-O at spendlessonhealthcare.com. Email today. So the next agenda item on the 2020 launch show is executive orders. What is an executive order? Well, an executive order is the president of the United States' way of saying, hey, uh, instead of trying to uh, gain support for a bill or cause or legislation through Congress, I'm just going to say, hey, we need to do this and work backwards, meaning let them fight against it if they don't like it. Um, So there is the executive order. And President Obama used more executive orders than any president in history, and President Trump has carried on that history at least, or that tradition at least in the form of health care. Several of these transparency initiatives have, in fact, been um, a result of executive orders. And I, I have a theory on why that is. Whenever I talk to anybody on the Hill, they kind of go, oh, we would never do anything based on who donates to us, but it is capitalism and it is America, so we, we know better than to take that bait, right? But here's the point. Um, the three biggest lobbies in this country, not in no particular order, uh, big pharma, uh, hospitals, and um, insurance, pl- health carrier, health, can- health plan carriers, okay, health carriers, insurance carriers. So um, when all three of those lobbies have aligned interest, okay, against something, that's a lot of cloud, isn't it? And when you scratch your head and say, how has this health care affordability thing gotten so out of control? It was out of control when I was a, a kid, a Gen Xer in the 80s, hearing my parents complain about the cost of health care. Got worse in the 90s, worse after the millennium. And now, folks, we're in 2020 and nobody's done anything about it. I mean, literally very few people have stood up and said, hey, this is out of control. What can we do? Because these three lobbies are so powerful, right? So what the presidents have done, the last two presidents, is said, hey, I suspect, they they didn't say this, this is my interpretation, they suspect that the three big lobbies are lining the pockets uh, for for the um, legislators, whether it's the House of Representatives, Senate, uh, any elected official is probably getting a lot of donations on both sides of the aisle, I might point out, uh, from these three lobbies. So they're very influential when it comes to price transparency legislation or anything that goes against big pharma thriving, hospitals thriving or health plans, insurance carriers thriving as well. So the president who, uh, the last two presidents who don't seem to be as reliant on the donors as elected officials have utilized this executive order to say, hey, if you guys aren't going to get behind this and champion this, then, then I will and you can work backwards. And so a lot of the recent healthcare legislation has been through executive orders where the president says, hey, I'm implementing this, and if you want to undo it, start fighting now. And what that's done, guys, is opened our eyes. And when I say our, I mean mine and yours, because I need you to step in and help here. You need to find out if your local hospital, if your elected official is fighting any of this, because there's not one constituent, whether you or any of your neighbors, that would say healthcare is not overpriced. So why is it that your elected official would not support all of these initiatives? Well, I just answered that question for you, didn't I? It's uh, the three biggest lobbies in the country. When they're aligned um, on, on, a, on an issue, it's really difficult to get uh, elected officials to, um, to go against them. And until you, as one of their constituents, uh, step up and say, no excuses, you've got to support transparency, it's going to continue to uh, take time. 
So executive orders, that's a little bit of an explanation for you on why they become so popular with President Obama and uh, President Trump. So let's talk about um, shopping healthcare a little further, becoming an EHC, an engaged healthcare consumer. Um, a lot of the talk within the industry, and guys, I'm not going to get too uh, industry uh, heavy here, but because I, I want to help the consumer understand that there's been a lot of discussion in recent years that you can get a procedure, let's say an MRI, within a hospital, within a hospital, and they can charge anywhere from three thousand to sixty thousand dollars for a simple MRI, or you can go across the street to an outpatient facility where the cost can be as low as three hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm going to pause for impact there, right? So the price on an MRI can range from $300 to $60,000 at times. Um, but traditionally, outpatient procedures have been significantly less expensive because hospitals, and remember, I'm a four-time hospital CEO, we always said, oh, our costs are so much more expensive, we need to charge you more. Well, hey, folks, newsflash, that doesn't mean you have to pay more. Shop it. Dog on it, become an EHC and shop it, right? But what's happened in the last couple of years is hospitals started buying up outpatient centers, their competition, so you couldn't shop it. Ah, uh, sneaky, sneaky, right? So um, what's that old movie from the 80s? Pretty sneaky, sis. I think that was a commercial back then. My buddies and I always used to quote. But, hey, uh, so hospitals started buying outpatient facilities so they could charge their higher rates, and then the feds after a year or two, or, or a lot longer in many cases, stepped in and said, hey, uh, no more of this, okay? Um, we can't keep paying uh, unjustifiable rates for procedures, number one. We shouldn't keep paying um, more to an outpatient facility owned by a health system than we would to one down the street that's not owned by a health system. And the reality is we just want some transparency in what the costs are, and, and we're moving towards justifying those costs a little more, too, which hospitals have never really had to do in a manner that anybody else agrees with or understands. So, so, guys, when you're shopping inpatient versus outpatient, inpatient simply means within the walls of a hospital. Outpatient means outside the walls of a hospital or within your home. It's almost always going to be significantly less expensive to do something outpatient. So one of the 10 tips that you're going to get in our free gift is, is to just ask your doctor, folks. I mean, how hard is it just to ask your doctor? Are there any options? What are your choices? What would you do? What's going to be the least expensive? Uh, are there any th other things you can tell me to – make sure I get the best care and less, less costly care, just ask your doctor, guys. It's not rocket science, and they're almost always going to tell you that it's more likely the outpatient rate is going to be significantly less than the inpatient rate. So uh, keep that in mind. What about shopping uh, websites? There's so many of them out there now to help you as an engaged healthcare consumer, and they don't require you to be a member of a plan. Some of them do, but some don't. Um, some of them are provided through your employer, so ask your employer if they have any resources along these lines. Um, when it comes to pharmaceuticals, you have a, a websites like GoodRx, G-O-O-D-R-X, which is awesome. I mean, literally, you type in your zip code, the medication, and your insurance, and immediately it tells you, hey, the CVS near your house has it for $12.86, but if you did mail order, it'll get there in three days, and it'll be $8.72. But if you want it delivered today, we can home deliver it for $9.92. It's just amazing, and it shows you what the, the Walgreens down the street would charge and all these others. So it gives you price options, and it gives you time options. Um, there's also RX Benefit, and there's Cover My Meds. Again, check those three websites out. Write them all three down if you don't know them because one or two of them might require you're a member of or, or, or with an employer that's a member so good RX, RX benefit and cover my meds. There you go. That's another one of the top, the 10 ways to save guys. So we're 20% of the way there. So if you're listening to this show, you're getting uh, the part of the free gift for free, right? There's also websites to shop procedures, surgeries, all that. Um, you've heard on my podcast prior shows from redirect health from a company called Helora, uh, from, uh, Pratter, P R A T T E R. You've heard uh, also um, Global One, who does the surgery center shopping in California. So some of those are niche. Redirect Health, I know, started out in New York. They're working their way across the country. He, Laura started out in Los Angeles, working their way across the country. Uh, Pratter contracts with uh, hospitals or employers or whomever, whoever sees their value. So there are options out there for you guys. Check those out. Um, almost all of those uh, companies have uh, their executives have been guests on prior podcasts. So if you didn't write them down or don't have a pen now, uh, remember this. It's just my name. Go to drjoshluke.com, 
click on podcast, and all of those website executives have been featured on prior versions of this podcast, which was previously called Dr. Luke's Waiting Room, the Healthcare Authority podcast. So um, that's true, I should say, for the uh, healthcare shopping ones. For the pharmaceutical shoppings, we have not had those guys, but you can just, like I said, if you want those, just text the word Josh to 72000 and, and you'll get a list of each of those as well. Uh, next agenda item as we come to our, our last few minutes here um, is sometimes you're just down and out and you need some cash. You need it quick to help pay a health care bill. Um, there's some suggestions on how to handle that in those free 10 tips, that, that free gift we give you. Uh, but also there's one I'm just going to tell you now because they support the show and they're great and they're so easy. Uh, it's just literally you take two minutes to open a wallet and they'll send you some free money. Uh, just for listening to this show that can only be used on healthcare. It's a prepaid debit card. I want you to go to a website called healthy.com, H-L-T-H-E.com. I want you to open a wallet. Tell them that Josh Luke sent you uh, from the Spend Less on Healthcare podcast. Um, you're going to get um, $25 uh, in, in a prepaid debit card just for being one of the first 100 folks to do that. Uh, healthy.com, H-L-T-H-E.com. Uh, when my mom passed, bless her heart, after her nine-year battle with Alzheimer's, we went to healthy.com. And, and guys, I want you to think of healthy.com as this. It's a it's a GoFundMe, but there's two distinct advantages that are different. Number one, if you donate money, it's a tax write-off because Healthy is affiliated with not-for-profit, so you can donate uh, in a tax-deductible manner. And number two, the money can only be spent on health care as it's issued to you in the form of a prepaid debit card that is accepted at all healthcare providers. So um, what you may not know about GoFundMe is it's not a tax deductible donation and their number one reason for successful campaigns is for healthcare. So healthy.com created a platform where you could say, hey, we will make it tax deductible. Anyone in America, in fact, not just America, internationally, they're doing a lot of great work internationally, working with countries and communities directly, can request free money and uh, they can make it happen. And if you uh, go to healthy.com and let them know we sent you from the Spend Less on Healthcare show, uh, they'll uh, issue you a prepaid card for 25 bucks. Who knows, you might even get more. There might be other donations that apply to what you are uh, trying to pay down. Hey folks, it's Dr. Josh Luke, and it's time for me to stop and thank the sponsors of this show that make Spend Less on Healthcare with Dr. Josh Luke a reality. Not only do these sponsors support the show, but their products and companies and services that I believe in and I truly believe that they can help you and your family spend less on healthcare. Today's sponsor is Viva Life Med Manager. If you want to look it up as we uh, talk about them a little bit, it's vivalife.care, V-I-V-A-L-I-F-E dot care. So when I was a hospital CEO, one of the biggest challenges we had was unnecessary admissions and readmissions, particularly with seniors and individuals that have chronic diseases. But in both cases, they had multiple medications, sometimes more than 10 meds at a time, guys. That's a lot. And it's hard for even a uh, clinical, a licensed clinical caregiver to keep up, let alone a family member. So when I founded the not-for-profit National Readmission Prevention Collaborative, we learned that med management was one of the leading causes of avoidable hospital admissions. And after reviewing hundreds of tools, I came across one that really made sense to me. And that's the award-winning med manager by Viva Life. It's a medication management tool. And it's very, very user-friendly, which I always look for, folks. And it's in both manual form or digital electronic form. And if you or your family could benefit from an improved daily medication management tool, whether it's online or just a simple folder that helps you out, check out the award-winning med manager at vivalife.care. That's vivalife.care. I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of med, man med management tools, and this one is the cream of the crop. Thank you to Viva Life Med Manager for your support of Spend Less on Healthcare with Dr. Josh Luke. And the last thing I want to talk about, guys, we've talked about this. It's included in, in some of the, the free gifts that we offer, the 10 tips, is um, considering if you don't have employer-sponsored healthcare, um, you might want to consider a cost-sharing plan like Sedera Health, S-E-D-E-R-A Health, Fit Health, um, or, or another. Uh, there's um, MediShare, M-E-D-I Share, which is a Christian-based one. Um, if you're not active in a Christian church, I wouldn't um, necessarily recommend that because there's accountability measures. And last thing you want to do is sign up for something where when you need the money to be paid, it actually gets denied. So, uh, but those are three options. Okay. I actually do get offered um, commercial health insurance through my employer. I teach at the university and um, I, d I don't take them. I actually just refuse them 
because it was going to cost me, I think, gosh, about um, $1,600 a month, just my share of costs. And then, of course, that's high deductible. So like most Americans, and if you haven't heard this stat, hope you're sitting down. Most American families are paying $23,000 a year in 2020 uh, before they see a doctor or get a simple prescription for health care benefits. So let's say that again. Most American families, the average is $23,000 a year uh, for health benefits when you factor in the monthly share of costs, the $5,000 deductible. Guys, that's before you see one doctor or get one prescription. And that, my friends, is a crisis. I'm a public speaker. I'm a keynote speaker. I also do breakout sessions on whether it's healthcare affordability or healthcare transformation or doing the right thing. But what, what I'm consistent in is this, guys. I used to say, hey, why is it that health insurance is the only insurance in America that's not catastrophic, if you think about it, right? You have life insurance, it's catastrophic. You have uh, auto insurance, it's in the case of a catastrophic injury or accident. But health insurance wasn't an included primary care. Well, guess what? Based on the information I just shared with you, I no longer say that when I'm providing a keynote because in my mind as a father, a husband and, and father of three, family of five, the fact that I have to pay $23,000 a year just for the right to see a doctor or get a prescription, that's a crisis. And we're there, folks. If you didn't realize we're there, hopefully that stat shares with you uh, that we are there. My friend Dave Chase always says that uh, more than 50% of a millennial's annual income will be spent on health care at current rates here in America. And that's, that's just tragic. That's beyond a crisis. So if I'm a millennial, and I always say this when I speak too, my kids are Gen Z. And when they graduate college and come to me and say, hey, hey, dad, health insurance. Yeah, I'm not really interested. I can't justify paying, you know, $700 a month, $500 a month for an individual policy when I'm a healthy young person. How can I argue with that? The answer is I can't, nor should I, because it's irresponsible. So there's a crisis on our hands, and that's why we're doing this show, folks. We're, we're giving you options to spend less on health care. And if you do not have employer-sponsored health insurance or if you're just tired of paying too much, I would encourage you to go to drjoshluke.com, click on uh, one of the options for, um, for uh, cost-sharing plans, which is Fit Health, and also there's also a Sedera option there. Um, Fit Health is actually a, a, a part of Sidera Health, but it's for folks who are really focused on fitness and, and committing themselves to fitness. Sidera is a little bit more generic. Both of those options are on the website. They're there for you. I pay less than $620 a month for my family of five's cost-sharing plan. I have had a great experience. It includes free teledoc, telehealth. It gives me access to those other resources to become an engaged healthcare consumer. And if you're a member of a direct primary care practice in your local market, most of those plans will actually deduct $100 a month from your premium that you pay them because uh, that, that will help you pay for that DPC membership. And if you aren't familiar with DPC, you can listen to some of my prior episodes of our shows. Uh, we talk about DPC at length on, um, on my prior podcast, which before <laughs> Dr. Luke's waiting room is actually called the Health Wealth Podcast. So all of those are on my website at drjoshluke.com. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in to this 2020 kickoff show. Really excited that you're listening. We're shifting our focus now to a topic that every American relate, can relate to, which is how to spend less on healthcare. We're still going to have guests that work in the industry, but, but the focus of their questions and their discussion with you, in addition to just human interest stories that they can share about how they've overcome this healthcare affordability crisis, is to give you simple tips and not all of them might work for you, but, but the hope is that one, two, three out of four or five or 10 may work for you. And eventually we get to enough where everybody's spending less on healthcare as a result of these different tactics that are no longer ideas, concepts, or just uh, things to think about, guys. They're proven tactics to spend less on healthcare. I'm Dr. Josh Luke, host of the Spend Less on Healthcare podcast. You can check us out on Friday nights uh, between 7 and 9 p.m. Pacific on the Dash Radio Network at dashradio.com. Uh, we're thankful to Providence St. Joseph and their partnership with Dash Radio and also with the Future of Health station that we're featured on. Thank you so much. If you haven't listened to 
uh, the Providence St. Joseph podcast with uh, Mary Renouf, uh, a friend and colleague. They are doing great work, and they're really as critical as I've been of health systems for being bad actors. Uh, Providence St. Joseph certainly wouldn't fit into that category. They're doing the right thing. They're putting the community first. They're acting like a true not-for-profit. They're addressing the social determinants of health care. Um, they're really doing they're walking the walk, folks, and I'm really grateful, particularly I'm in Southern California where Providence St. Joseph has a dominant footprint here in Orange County. I know a lot of their executives. I am so appreciative that they're doing the right thing. Um, and uh, if you haven't checked out their hashtag campaign, their, their media campaign, that health is a human right, you should check it out. It's really cool. Um, you can just follow Mary Renouf, M-A-R-Y-R-E-N-O-U-F on LinkedIn to learn more about that. Or just tune into the Dash Radio Network, Future of Health radio station, and you can catch both of our podcasts there. Thanks so much for tuning in to our 2020 kickoff. Look forward to talking to you on the next show. It's Dr. Josh Luke with the Spend Less on Healthcare show. So here we are. We've reached the end of the road for this excellent episode. Make sure that you follow our guests on social media and check out our prior episodes as well. You can find them at drjoshluke.com. You already heard our offer for a free copy of 10 Tips to Start Saving on Healthcare today. In addition, when you text that number, we're going to respond with a promo code that gets you a copy of the award-winning Personal Health Spending Reduction Tool for just $49 instead of $79. This Personal Healthcare Reduction Spending Tool guarantees you and your family will save at least $1,000 in the initial 90 days after completing the assessment and more. Uh, even more than $5,000 in the first year. This is guaranteed uh, for you and your family to save that much money in year one. Uh, this is a not-for-profit, folks, and we did this for you. We partnered with all these resources because this is what, our, um, what we're trying to do is just to help you learn how to spend less on healthcare. So again, to receive the free gift and discount, it's really simple. Just text the word Josh, J-O-S-H, to 72,000 and get your 10 tips list and uh, a discount code at no charge. Last but not least, my speaking schedule for the upcoming year is almost filled up. So if you have an upcoming event you'd like to recommend me for, or if you work in the healthcare industry and your company could use a coaching session or maybe uh, utilize the Selling to Hospitals Masterclass, reach out to me today at info at spendlessonhealthcare.com. That's just like the name of the podcast. It's info, I-N-F-O, at spendlessonhealthcare.com. You've been listening to the nationally recognized healthcare podcast, Spend Less on Healthcare with Dr. Josh Luke, where you get simple tips to reduce the amount of money you and your family spend on healthcare. For more information on any of the tips, products, promotions, solution providers, or guests featured on this episode, email info at spendlessonhealthcare.com. That's I-N-F-O at spendlessonhealthcare.com. For additional episodes and information on the host, visit drjoshluke.com. That's drjoshluke.com.